or good morning, depending on where you live. Um, first of all, I would like to thank IRI and the IRI communication team um, for giving me this opportunity to, to talk about the work we are doing and the work we do related to gender. For the next five to ten minutes, I will also I will discuss the topic of shared resources in rice farming and how women benefit from it. So this is what I will talk about for the next five to ten minutes. Let me first start with introducing myself. I'm Peter Rutsaert. I work for the Social Science Division of IRI. And most of the time or most of my work is for the Corriga project. Now the Corriga project is a a project funded by the Swiss Development Corporation and this project focuses on um, irrigated rice production zones. We work in six countries including Thailand, Myanmar, um, Vietnam, Indonesia, Sri Lanka and China. I think I've named them all. Um, so the work we do is we do adaptive research in those countries. We work together with farmers in the field to improve their practices in rice farming. Um, we focus, for example, on uh, one, one important thing we do is try to reduce yield gaps while reducing environmental footprint. Now, um, one part of this project, or what we also hope to do, is improve gender equity and uh, the livelihoods of the women farmers in the areas where we work. Now, something I think quite important if you want to improve something is to know where we're at where we're at right now so to understand the situation rural women face women in rice farming face and to look at the um, the barriers they have the task division and and the problems they face so the approach we took to to look at this is we did focus the group discussions with uh, several women groups in in the countries where in the countries where we work especially four countries Thailand, Philippines, um, Myanmar and Indonesia. So we did focus group discussions with, in all these different countries and our findings were I think quite surprising and they were not really in line with the general discussion about gender in agriculture. So we had a bit of different findings from research that mostly comes from for example Africa or South Asia where a lot of the gender research is currently being done. So first of all, what we see is that we have quite a strong gender equity on a household level. For example, income from husband and wife is pooled as family income. And it's in so many cases that we looked at, in most cases actually, it's the women who control this income. And it doesn't, doesn't matter how much they contribute to the income, they will still have they will still decide what happens with the income, how much is spent on education, rice farming whatsoever. So it's the women who do control this. If we look at resources owned by a family, we see that most of the resources are owned together. When we ask this question, for example, in, in, in Indonesia, women find it very weird to ask this question, who owns what? It's most of the things when they're married or living together is owned by the family. Um, if we look at rice farming itself, we see that rice farming really is a, is a um, family work. So husband and wife work together in the field. It's not that uh, one decides everything. No, they work together in the field and they decide also together. Sometimes it's the case that, for example, uh, the man takes more a leading role. Then he will have also something more to say. But still, most women we talked to felt that they had uh, a voice in decision making and if they had concerns those concerns would be raised. So on that household level we see a very strong equity in the four countries where we worked, uh, where we did, collected our data. If we now look at the community level we see a bit of a different story. So on a community level we see a very strong empowerment in Thailand and also in the Philippines. So women had a strong voice in the community, they had access to information uh, access to extension services and training. They were leading uh, farmer groups, they were leading village groups, so they were very uh, powerful in that sense. While in Indonesia and Myanmar, women were absolutely not active and um, 
not 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 they didn't have any voice on a community level decision making now this also has implications for agriculture and for their agricultural practices and rice farming for example in indonesia most of the um a lot of community decisions influence household decisions so for example variety selection is made uh varietal selection is made on the community level so on a household level they cannot discuss this anymore the man decides this on a community level in the areas where we work and this this rule also holds true for the household level so that's where women have less of a voice also when it comes to access to information extension services we see that that women have very quite quite limited access this mostly goes to the men while both men uh, husband and wife are working together in the fields so on that sense improvements are very much possible so if you know if the, we also have quite some other results but if you look at those two main results we had from our focus group discussions we also looked at what are the implications for our project for the Corica project and what we see is that or what we really focus on if we provide information or extension that we be that we are very inclusive that we focus on both men and women and that we make sure that if our information we make sure that our information is targeted both groups if we need to therefore adapt the information we give about farming practices we we will do this and we will make sure that the women get the information or the information in the way they prefer most but we also will keep including men in what we do um, so I think um, another consequence or another important finding from this from looking at gender equity in, in rice farming is that even though if, if we focus on the crop and we focus on, on male farmers we still benefit the wives because husband and wife benefit from a, a, a same income they benefit from the whole family income so even though if, if men attend the trainings we still hope and we still see and hear that the women are benefiting from what we do from those shared resources that shared income um, now I think this is maybe not as big of an eye-catching story or an exciting story as some of the other work we do with um, less privileged women with, with people with much more problems we work in irrigated rice zones which are mostly a bit better off than the really um, distinct areas but it's still quite important research and it still provides a different way of looking at gender equity so for example if we compare this to Africa where we have very separate um, sorry very separate uh, demarcated ma male and female uh, plots incomes and crops uh, we see that um, rice farming in Southeast Asia it's much more a combined effort and it's much more a family effort if you compare this then to South Asia where there's a really strong male domin dominance on a household level you see again that here's a different here is a different um, equity at play at the household level so we have some different findings here now if you therefore focus on improving uh, gender equity we should be aware of, of these things and I think it's very important that we understand what's going on in the local situation and that we try to adapt or uh, adjust what we what we do to the local situation so therefore i think it's it's um it's very necessary that we look at the barriers women face on the ground on the uh, in the field and that we adapt to the local situation so with this i would like to say thank you very much for listening i wish you a very happy international women's day and thank you very much